What up, y'all? How y'all doing? Um, before I get started with my first movie review, I think an apology is in order. Um, I promised that I will come out with the review like a good while back, but since then, a whole lot of things been happening to me and around me. And one thing about me is that your health comes first, your families come first, and you have to take care of your priorities before any of this internet or content creation all of this hoopla that I be seeing going on a lot you got to take care of real life first before you ever set foot on the internet and try to do other things it's all about your priorities or at least that's that's the way I look at it so I just like to say I apologize to everybody that's been waiting and waiting here it is y'all I hope y'all enjoy but without further ado this is my first movie review of Tracy Townsend enjoy the following program is rated TV MALS. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and nudity. It is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. So, Tracy Townsend is a movie that was directed by Craig Ross Jr., the same man that did Blue Hill Avenue and those motor movies, both which are arguably staples within the black cinema. He's also one of my first few followers on my Instagram account, and for that, thank you kind sir. <laughs> thank you. But seriously though, I do recommend y'all peeping out those videos, especially Blue Hill Avenue. If you're a fan of The Wire and Pyre, I definitely recommend you go ahead and peep this movie out. Please, you won't regret it. Anyway, Tracy Townsend stars the beautiful Jasmine Lewis, an important individual to know who has produced, starred, and directed in quite a few projects of her own. So, in other words, um, Baby Girl's been getting into it for quite a while. Go ahead and check out some of her works as well. But in this movie, she plays this rude lady nobody would probably want to have in their orbit. To describe her would be like a laundry list of negative adjectives along with a misplaced idea of what love actually is. Come to find out, she's a journalist that pretty much write articles about giving people relationship advice, but in typical movie fashion, the main character ironically gives to other people what she can't necessarily give to herself, or doesn't know how to do it yet. At the moment, she's dating this man by the name of Travis, played by Robert T. Jones. Bro, Robert is Richard T. Jones, man. Put some respect on that brother's name. That's the first episode now. Tighten up, as y'all were. AKA the man that did Jilly from Philly Bad and knows why did I get married movies. Oh, and he also plays Slim from one of my personal favorites, The Wood. Now, this character will end up serving as the thing that sets off the chain of events that propels this movie forward. And that comes from just him interacting with Tracy. The movie really kicks in the gear on Tracy's fourth date with him. Now, on this particular night, Tracy was ready to take things to the bedroom from some adult action, so to speak. The way that she was going at it, she was acting like how a kid would behave on Christmas morning, just tearing into gifts trying to see what she got. But to her dismay, before things can go any further, Travis started talking a foreign language when he started conveying his requirements before taking things to the next level. Now, to Tracy and what she's used to, that came off as a bit of a culture shock. But staying consistent to how she is, whatever she wants, she will go after it, even if it means disregarding the obvious signs that Travis bluntly and verbally was making clear to her. So, on their fifth day, shit hits the fan when she attempts to do the exact same thing she did on the fourth day. I don't know why she thought it would work. I mean, isn't that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But, hey. Now, during the beginning of the movie, one would presume that she was just either horny or sexually frustrated. So, when she tries to put the moves on Travis again, things don't necessarily go the way that she thought that they would go. And I mean, that's the logical conclusion because, again, the things that he was making clear to her, it's as if it went in one ear out the other. So, her reaction was a little bit expected and a little bit over the top, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> But as the audience looking at the movie, she's not used to this treatment at all. It's like she couldn't comprehend how Travis would not give into this primitive nature just because she's showing all the proper ingredients to incentivize such behavior. And let me tell you, this movie does not hesitate in showing you just how delectable those ingredients she's working with are. But just like Dr. Umar said, 
Black women are beautiful, but let me refocus. Black women are beautiful, but let me refocus. So when she doesn't get her way, she reacted as most people would react when their regular schedule programming is always getting their way. In this case, she just lashes out with insults, accusations, and other things, saying as though her old tricks that would have probably worked on other people ain't working on this brother here. I mean, she even goes as far as to say, Oh my god, you're gay, aren't you? I'm leaving. This is something to note as far as like character development goes. Um, looking at Travis, Travis behaves like a man that's trying to build a strong relationship on principles and not just on simple desirables like sex. Personally, in my observation of just interacting and just being around women, most ladies will stereotypically presume that sexual interaction is all that a man thinks about. And in most cases, they right. But if you look at the certain types of daily consumed media, um, it doesn't make things any better. But then again, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have some ladies that understand their appeal, weaponize it, or utilize it as a means to accomplish their agendas. It's just how it is. This is what we call the psychology of strategic marketing, which people practically use every single day on their social media account. Have you been on Instagram recently? But amongst us men are fully mature ones that are attracted to a good woman's mentality, their compatibility, and her interests, where if combined with his interests, both could invest together into something that's constructive that maybe can be used as a foundation to not only enrich each other lives in some aspects but also to accomplish feats where if they were separate as individuals they may not have the resources knowledge patience nor strength to reach looking at travis's demeanor he knows what type of woman he's looking for he has his standards his boundaries his moral code that governs his motives and his reasoning for finding a suitable mate he is looking for somebody to settle down with that's why he's doing all these things because he's playing the long game he's looking for longevity rather than just some some short-term fling or something that is temporary but Tracy, on the other hand, is behaving like somebody that needs to mature a bit. So after that drama filled night, she meets up with her best friend by the name of Seal, who is played by the lovely Miss Mary Moreau, and they begin to conversate about why any of Tracy's past partners that she was involved with refrain from asking for her hand in marriage. Now, to be fair in regards to marriage, Tracy has the mindset that many people have when they get up there in age. You begin to see friends and family members finding their significant others, getting married, starting families, buying houses, going on trips, doing all of these things. Due to social media and depending on the people that you're following that's together with someone, spamming your whole entire timeline, you're just going to be seeing nothing but pics and videos of them going on adventures. And if you're single, this only intensifies the want to experience the idea. Get what I said, the idea, because what you see and what you perceive may not always be the reality. But as I said, people just want to experience the idea of what's purposefully being advertised to you. There are a lot of ladies out there I'm sure that want to be married, but Tracy's character is the archetype that serves as a good example of how your ego and bad attitude can get in the way of being in a meaningful relationship with another person. Now I could go deeper into the subjects of what I believe to make a good, substantial, and traditional relationship and its components. Actually, I may be doing a little bit of that at the end of this review. However, there are other people that are out there that can better convey the intricacies of such topics whom I would recommend you checking out. Links will be in the description. But back to the review. Now with all the concepts that I've discussed, Seal is the character that understands and recognizes how some of Tracy's choices and behavior might have led to her present dilemma. But unfortunately, Tracy is the one that can't seem to wrap her mind around these things. Actually, let me talk about the character Seal for a moment. At the start of this movie, to me, Seal came off a bit, um... Interesting. Come to find out, she is probably the one who drops the most wisdom and knowledge throughout this whole entire film. Seal is the anchor that keeps Tracy grounded when she's going off the deep end. My heart goes out to her because I can clearly see that being her friend alone is no easy task, let alone a feat to try to accomplish. It's not for the weak of hearts. Seal's character is the epitome of a friend accepting another person despite their tendencies and having the patience to deal with their bullshit. And quite honestly, I think every ratchet friend needs to have that one friend that's in their circle that literally knock them upside the head and ask what you're doing. So out of the conversation between these two, Tracy comes up with this wild idea which is to essentially get every individual that she was involved with in hopes of interviewing them to find out the answer to why none of them will actually will want to marry her. <laughs> you serious? Crazy, right? <laughs> So from here on out, we skydive deep into the rabbit hole, which is her past, semi-Uncle Scrooge style, but without the supernatural element of ghosts. But metaphorically speaking, the ghosts in this film probably would be the backlash from her decisions from dealing with the skeletons in the closet, but in this case, it could be considered a mortuary or a graveyard. You can take your pick. But the thing the viewer finds out is just literally how... 
I don't even know how I can say this. How fucked up Tracy really is. Like, I get it. In the beginning, I thought that she was just annoying, but that's just the surface level of it. I mean, damn, girl. <laughs> So as Tracy begins to interview her past entanglements, the view is presented with a bit of a glimpse of how each relationship was like during their time with her. <laughs> each of them accompanied by these hilarious old ass infomercial like introductions. As each person began to talk about their moments with Tracy, you begin to pick up a certain pattern. At first, it would seem that things would be going well in the beginning, just like all relationships. But then Tracy begins to do certain things that would definitely validate anybody's choice not to take us seriously. I don't want to spoil anything, so if you want to find out, I recommend you seeing the movie so you would know just how spicy things get <laughs> but i will talk about that ending though now that ending was something that i could see happening for tracy especially with one surprise reveal of her past excursions opening up the door to that possibility even with that being there was a certain part of me that kind of wish you know it kind of ended a tad bit differently but i might just be a traditionalist when it comes to certain story elements and plot beats all right this thing is going on long enough let me go ahead and wrap this up before it gets too long or rather longer than what it already is the acting in this movie was done pretty well and it was nice to see richard t jones humble beginnings the way this movie was shot was pretty nice as well however it damn near gave me like this vintage feel one noticeable example for me was doing the classic zoom techniques that damn near made jasmine lewis on par with one of those 70s blastoitation films for whatever reason, my mind went straight back to Pam Grill on some of these shots. But on my final thoughts, Tracy Townsend is a cautionary tale. This whole entire movie is about coming to the realization that one must hold themselves accountable for their behaviors and how he or she may have contributed to the unwanted circumstances one may find themselves prisoners of. Getting somebody, or anything for that matter, is the easy thing. However, what you do in order to maintain it is what would determine what would survive the test of time. But as I said before, I know I sound like a broken record, Tracy Townsend is a nice personification of a strong and beautiful woman that did something that took courage, maturity, and real strength to do, which was simply looking in the mirror and accepting the bad parts of herself and acknowledging the fact that she may not be all what she crops up to be. I remember some time ago, my mentor told me something. He told me that expectations minus reality equals a mature revelation often uncomfortable. How Tracy perceived herself was put up under the microscope. Her ego in some cases was bruised, but unfortunately for people, it may take some uncomfortable circumstances to happen in order for reality to get your attention. I don't know why people are like that, but they just stubborn. There is no such thing as a perfect person. Even the person or the people that many may believe has everything figured out or seems to be very well off got baggage that they wrestle with on a daily basis. Some are very well hidden while others are a little bit more obvious than others. We as humans have our flaws, but it's how a person continuously work on themselves that open doors to what you need and sometimes what you want out of life. Tracy's humbling process of bettering herself as to not make those same habitual mistakes in her past was quite something to watch. If somebody is watching this film and they can see certain similarities or at least see a little bit of themselves within her in some type of way, I will hope this movie will motivate them to actually work on themselves. Now I didn't say, you know, go out there and interview all your S's and all, but doing the best you can do and learning from your past in order to bring out a better version of yourself. Sadly, most people won't even do that. A lot of people would like to remain comfortable in their ways, others would feel offended if the truth about them was ever critiqued or brought out into the open. Some people would just laugh and admit about some of the messed up things that they do or is currently doing without changing anything. And what's most terrifying are the people that are actually proud of their delusional outlook on reality. But if you're not getting the message yet, simply work on yourself. Become a better version of yourself. Learn from your past and move forward into a better future. Now is this movie worth checking out? Yes. Even though this movie was made back in the day, and it feels so feels so weird saying that. But even though this movie was made some time ago, the truth of this movie and the message remains relevant to this day. Especially in these days and times when so many Tracy archetypes have been created by social media. Now where can you go to see this movie? I personally peeped out this movie on Amazon Prime. So I would recommend going over there to check it out or purchasing a physical copy of the movie, which in this case would probably be within the DVD format. But if you're thinking about getting a physical copy, I must warn you that the visual quality isn't gonna be as HD and everything else that we're used to to this day. Remember, this movie came out in 2006, so you're gonna get 2006 visuals. But that's just what I think about this movie. But if you've seen this movie for yourself, um, go ahead and comment below. Let's talk about it. I'm interested to hear it. But until next time, y'all, stay blessed. Make sure you treat everybody well. Work on yourself. And uh, peace out.